Patrick Stewart, and what is your name? My name is Heather. Hello, Heather, you okay? Yeah. Okay, what's your question? All right, um, this is more of a somber question. Um, I recently saw uh, on YouTube how you uh, talked to Amnesty Now, I think it was, um, about your uh, view against uh, violence against women. And that speech was really moving to me, and it helped me through my own turmoils in a little bit. So I wanted to thank you personally for that. And then my question, segueing into that, besides acting, what are you most proud of that you've done in your life that you're willing to share with us that isn't related to acting? Great question. Thank you. I think you have very uh, beautifully linked the important things together. Um, the work that I do in campaigns about uh, violence towards women, particularly domestic violence, is something that grew out of my own childhood experience. And the, I, I'm associated particularly with one organization in England called Refuge, which has, since the 1970s, provided, among many other services, safe houses for women and children. And I mean safe houses, where they can go and feel, perhaps for the first time in years, secure with their children. Um, <laughs> Refuge is a great organization. Now, a few months ago, I did do this event the, the, uh, the Million Man Pledge, which was co-sponsored by the United Nations. Um, and it, was a, it is a great campaign, which is based on the belief that the people who could do most to improve the situation of so many women and children are in fact men. It's in our hands to stop violence towards women. So I do what I do. I do what I do in my mother's name because I couldn't help her then. Now I can. But since, and I've talked often about this, I'm on record about my childhood. But last year, I learned things about my father that I didn't know and my elder brother didn't know. And that was that in 1940, due to his experiences in France with the British Expeditionary Force, my father was suffering from what was then called severe shell shock. And that's what I read in his notes at the Imperial War Museum in England. We now know it as post-traumatic stress disorder, and we also know that there are soldiers now all over the world, here in the United States and in the United Kingdom, who are returning from combat zones with a serious uh, condition of post-traumatic stress disorder. Now we know what it is, and we know how to deal with it. In 19... 40. It was just shell shock and basically soldiers were being told, pull yourself together, get a grip on yourself and get out there and be a man. <laughs> well, it has put into con and, um, uh, an expert in this condition who works with a, a charity, another organization I'm now happy to be a patron of called Combat Stress, has said to me, what your father had in 1940, because he was never treated, never left him. And all the conditions of your childhood that you have described to me are classic symptoms of um, veterans who were suffering from this serious um, psychological and physical illness. So I work for refuge for my mother and I work for combat stress for my father in equal measure. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful story. Thank you. Uh, my, my
idea. Um, are you okay? You are. Yeah. Um, it, uh, yeah. No. It, it, the thing that happened, it's past, and it was just a point of uh, accepting that um, that it was okay that it happened, and that I, yeah. you know, that I wasn't. Because um, one thing I've noticed is there's still that uh, shaming of the women. Yes. And so yeah. that that speech really just finally let me say it's okay that that happened and you know I can move on and heal so I really appreciate it I really do as a child I heard in my home doctors and ambulance men say mrs. Stewart you must have done something to provoke him mrs. Stewart it takes two to make an argument wrong wrong my mother did nothing to provoke that, and even if she had, violence is never, ever a choice that a man should make. Ever. standing up and that's brilliant because you have here in Texas a man called Mike Rawlings. Michael Rawlings, Mayor of Dallas. Michael was with me on that platform at the United Nations event and he spoke so potently and so powerfully about these issues. He spoke about it from his own experience of being a Texan and of living and working in Dallas and I was so proud to share that platform with him. He's a remarkable individual. Okay, we're gonna talk about other things. Right. You, take, you take care of yourself. You want a hug? Don't get a hug. Yeah. Don't get a hug. Don't get a hug. Almost impossible to follow, so... Uh...